any advice out there about being disciplined, about making any types of stride in growth, personal development, or especially with your relationship with God, you are going to hear these words, be consistent. We all know that that is going to be the key to continuing to grow closer and closer to God, continue to be who God has called us to be, continue to pursue the things, our dreams, our passions, the relationships we want, whatever it is. But how do we stay consistent? So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to actually stay consistent in your relationship with God, how to keep your prayer life something that becomes a habit that's not just something that you check off the list, but actually something that becomes a reservoir. It becomes a sacred resting place for you and God to continue to connect as you continue to live out your life. So let's get into this video. We all know that to lose weight, we would have to move our bodies more. We would have to consume the right types of food. You wouldn't think, okay, if I want to lose weight, I'm going to eat a bag of Cheetos and sit on the couch. We know what it takes to lose weight or to build muscle. We have to lift heavier weights. And so that's kind of a common knowledge, but we also don't often think about what are the actual practices that help us stay closer to God? What are those things that continue to foster growth? If you are a Christian, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit, so you have the Lord with you. At the same time, you want to experience him deeper. You want to be more in line with who he's called you to be, to follow his will, to live the life that he's called you to. It is actually for you to flourish. So we think about the gym. We know that one workout doesn't make you more fit. Just like saying one prayer doesn't make you more holy or doesn't bring you closer to God necessarily in a, in a big way, but it does bring you close to God in that moment. So that's why prayer and spending time with God needs to be something that's consistent if you want to make any types of change or stride in your relationship with God. So you can't eat Cheetos on the couch and think you're gonna lose weight. So thinking about the 1%, thinking about that tiny, tiny investment. James Clear in the book Atomic Habits likes to say casting a vote. So when you're consistent in your prayer life, you're casting a vote to who you wanna be, to the type of relationship you want to dive into. So 1% better, consistency helps. And so when we have that frame, when we think about doing things that help us be consistent, we don't have these lofty, grandiose ideas or expectations of what we need to do, which can lead us feeling defeated, which keeps us from then continuing to come to the Lord or to, to acknowledge the prayerful space that's right there present to us in each and every day. It's important to think about consistency as 1% versus doing one thing, reading one scripture or doing a Bible study for 30 days. That's why I'm not a big fan of doing these challenges. When they're framed around, you're hoping for this grand change. You cannot bake a muffin at 5,000 degrees for five minutes. It needs to be at 350 degrees for 22 minutes or whatever recipe you're using. The first thing that I would tell you to do is to actually lower the bar. So don't try so hard. And I'm really speaking to more of the Christians that are neurotic, that if you're anything like me, you're high achiever, you wanna do, 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 or you feel like that big strides are really what makes a change and being perfect is what drives you. I want to invite you, and I hope you hear this as love, to reframe this in a way that actually allows you to enter into prayer. Because lowering the bar helps you start. So there's a, a phrase by um, St. Ignatius, love his spirituality. I love his work on discernment through the St. Ignatius, Ignatius's exercises. And he says, anything worth doing is worth doing poorly. Now that doesn't mean, hey, if you have a stamp, you know, like a letter <laughs> to the mail, you could put the stamp on the left side versus the right. If it wouldn't be like, well, anything worth doing is worth doing poorly. So I'm just gonna put it on the other side. No, if you know where to put it, put it there. It's not much effort. But when we're starting something that's difficult, that isn't consistent, maybe that isn't some, somewhere we wanna be, we don't have it as a habit yet, letting ourselves try, even if it's poor, even if we say we're trying to be consistent for this whole week, every day we want to do this, and you do it one time this week, as opposed to doing it zero like you did the week before, we celebrate that win. I always do that in spiritual direction when I'm talking to someone and they say, you know, I was going to pray every day and, and I only found myself praying like one time when I was driving in the car on Thursday. And I said, that's wonderful. What was that time like? Don't worry about all the times that you didn't do it. Think about the time that you did do it. What was that like? And you made a, str you strived, strove, 
you strove. You strived for something, you tried something new, and you started. It allows you to start. And that's why it's important to lower the bar because that leads into the next point, celebrating little wins. When you have something that is rewarding, like you have a, a small win, it motivates you to keep going. Now, I'm not trying to say trick yourself into like being motivated to spend time with God. Dave Ramsey actually has this, this kind of philosophy or mantra, which I, I agree with most of the time, is to get out, get out of debt by using the snowball effect which is don't just pay off the credit card maybe that has the highest interest, which technically would save you the most money. So instead of paying off a $10,000 credit card, pay off a $2,000 credit card first. You will feel the sense of accomplishment. Wow, I did that. And it'll motivate you to attack the $10,000 one, even though the $2,000 card has less money and less interest. But if you start with a $10,000 one and you're finally trying to change your behaviors and it takes you months and months to pay it off, you're gonna feel defeated and go right back to your own old patterns. So little wins really help you feel um, this sense of motivation to stay consistent. So that's why I think about starting small and not trying to do too much so that you can have little wins. I think it's something we overlook and it's so easy to take for granted, but having environments where your consistent behavior can take place is super essential. So for example, I use the Cheeto analogy about working out. I really love Cheetos, obviously. I don't like to eat them because of the chemicals in them all the time. I will, you know, you'll catch me on a day eating Cheeto once in a while, but I don't buy them. I don't keep them in the house. I do really like ice cream too. So I batch homemade ice cream with raw milk and cream. I, I try to have, have raw dairy. So I batch it at home. So I have an environment where I have something. If I have a craving, I can use it and I know it'll be beneficial for me. Same thing with our prayer life. Have an environment where you can pray. So I like to have a sacred space in my house, a chair that I go to a certain time of day. I make the environment, I set it up. I maybe, if I'm going to have coffee in the morning, I will pre-fill my coffee. I make things easy, enter into either a more intentional time of prayer or I'll purposely turn my phone on airplane mode at night so that when I'm going to bed, I don't and scroll on my phone or to play a game or to look up random things on Google, which I like to do. So I put myself in an environment where I have the opportunity to reflect and do a prayer of examine, to reflect on my day, see where the Lord has loved me, see where I acted in fear and anger, and then to resolve to make a different decision the next day. And the next thing to be more consistent is to do it first, especially when you're starting a new habit. It's easy to say, oh yeah, yeah, I'll get to it, especially if you're not motivated to do something or you're feeling like, gosh, this is so different, especially if your prayer life is in a dry season right now, it can be easy to say, well, that's not the most life-giving thing, even though pushing into dry prayer is actually one of the most healthy and actually transformative things you can do. Uh, I have another video on that coming out soon, so subscribe if you wanna catch that video about how dryness is really, really valuable in our prayer life. When we don't do it first, it can be easy to put it at the end, but when we're talking about even productivity, having the thing that you need to do the most in front of the other things you need to do that maybe are like easier to do then having that in the first of your day actually allows you to reorder your life and then your body will catch on So I'm not saying if you don't pray every day or you're not consistent that you're somehow bad. And absolutely not. The Lord, mercy is new every morning. But that's also why I think it's important to do things first. It reorders our desires to really love God more and to actually receive his love. We don't love God because we're supposed to. We love God in response to his love. And so when you go to God first for love, it'll make your relationships run smoother. It'll make your day run smoother. And so even if it is a small prayer of intention in the morning, Lord, I am here. I want to present myself to you. I want to look for you throughout the day. Pick a phrase that resonates with you and say it first thing in the morning. Make it a notification on your phone. Make it easy. Don't have to overcomplicate. I think we may overlook these simple ways we can stay consistent in our connection with God so that it becomes all of our life versus just this segmented time in the morning or at church on Sunday or when we're reading the Bible. God is with us all the time. And that is where we're going in our union with God is to be with him constantly. He already is with us constantly, but being aware of 
his presence is going to help us live in God's will more fully. You already are because you're loved by God, but helps you live more fully in, in your relationship with God. And then this one, to be consistent, you need to plan. Zig Ziglar has this famous quote that says, if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. So having a plan, what does consistency look like in your life? What would it look like now in this season of life? Maybe you have young kids, maybe you have multiple jobs, maybe you're in college, maybe you're retired, I don't know. But what would consistency in your life with God look like for you? Another great way to do that is to have a plan. You can also have a rule of life. I have a five day course on how to create a rule of life, which basically helps you have habits and rituals and rhythms that help you stay connected to God in all of the areas of your life. Grab the course down below, it's totally for free. But plan how you want to be consistent with the Lord. What that does that look like? Does that mean taking out a Bible reading plan for this year? Maybe you've never read through the Bible in a whole year. Don't just do it because your favorite influencer is doing it or because your church is doing it. Really ask the Lord, own your own faith and say, Lord, how are you inviting me to stay with you in this season? It could look totally different. It might just mean you are in a small group this season and community's carrying you, but choose something to help you stay consistent. So plan how what that's gonna be like for you. Don't just copy paste someone else's. Discern, try it on, and if you try it on and it doesn't fit, I always say, put it off and ask the Lord for something new and look for something new, but definitely plan. And then obviously I've kind of hinted at this, but make being consistent really easy and not because I'm trying to say take the easy route out or do always do the path of least resistance but especially if you're new and you're starting out there may be a chance where you need or this may be a season where you actually need to push yourself and so if that's you push yourself but if you want to do something that to really start getting in the habit and you've not been consistent before really at all then make it easy and doable James Clear again talks about in Atomic Habits that if you do something that even is a little hard, but it's two minutes, you can do it. So if it's if it's something that's like, I'm gonna pray for two minutes every single day, well, that is super doable, even if you have a really busy life. If you say, I wanna pray for 30 minutes a day, I remember dating a guy when I was like 24, and he was a little religious in the sense of like, he always bit off more than he could chew. He was feeling really distant from God, but he would um, like hear a sermon on, if you're not in the word, you know, he like a pastor would preach something pretty idealistic and pretty like matter of fact of like, if you're not taking God's word seriously, yeah, but because you're not reading in 30 minutes a day, you need to start or something, something like that. And I remember him putting a sticky note on his computer in his room that said 30 minutes a day reading. And I remember thinking like, well, you're, I mean, if you're feeling so disconnected from God, it's probably not going to happen. Like, I don't know. I was just kind of being like, will you really do that? Not because I was judging him. I just felt like it was an effort of a willpower effort. And I asked him a couple of weeks later and I hope I didn't take it judgmental. I don't think he did, but I was like, how's it going? But like reading the book, <laughs> word i'm laughing because it's just such part of our humanity it's not bad it's just he goes he goes oh i haven't done it at all and i was like that's so honest yeah like i haven't either it's like 30 minutes is kind of a lot so make it easy 30 minutes is, is a lot to read especially if you're not used to it so me i go to the gym five to six days a week i'm not saying that to say like that's your idea what you should do but i've been doing it for the past five years so if someone say has a new year's resolution or they want to start going to the gym then I wouldn't say start with six days a week. Start with putting on your gym shoes and taking a walk around the block. Make it easy so that you become the type of person that starts to exercise or to the gym. You have to align your consistency plan, your consistency pattern with things that are easy for where you are. What is the next step that you can master or that you can continue to do so that you actually have it be more subconscious? You don't have to think about it and it's not something that takes a lot of effort because changing our habits Ooh, takes a lot of effort, especially if we have a lot of resistance to them. Which brings me to my last and final point of staying consistent is actually asking ourselves, what has kept us from being consistent? I'm always a big fan of not thinking about, oh, what do I need to achieve? No matter how hard we look at the goal or what we want, maybe I want a deep prayer life with God and I want to spend so much time with him and I want to know more theology, I would tend to, you probably can see these books back here. When I was thinking about getting into some theology, I was like, I went to a bookstore and I bought like, I have no idea if this one's good or not, but I bought a bunch of ones from the bookstore from different different theo the theology kind of viewpoints or whatever. I haven't read a single one of them. 
So it's not because I'm, I mean, I'm a book collector, but what kept me from being consistent is that I overdo it and I end up being defeated or I end up not really listening to the season that God has me in. And I'll just like, I'm just want to figure it out. And I do that. And that keeps me from being consistent is my own humanity, my own self striving. And God actually has brought me actually, and I bought all these books. The Lord just told me, he goes, Meryl, just read the Bible. Just read your Bible. If you want to know more theology and I've taken theology courses and stuff. And it was, I was like, yeah, you're right. What was really was driving me trying to achieve this new thing. And I have to look at what was keeping me from it, from being consistent with God. And that was really just my own self where my, my own ideas about what consistency or what maybe God was calling me into to do. How have you stayed consistent? I would love to know down in the comments what has kept you on track and what has gotten in the way. Is this a safe space? At least in my comments, how I'm gonna respond. You are totally loved and I would hold no judgment. We are all in a process. Would love to know what you do to stay consistent. I'm sure I've missed some things. Don't forget to grab my rule of life course. And then of course, if you wanna grow deeper in your relationship with God, I do have a signature course as well that you could apply to if you think that might be a good fit. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next video.